Be quiet, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So if you don't know, I encourage you. Amen. This year is purpose to grow. So let's grow in the gifts. Imagine if I had an amazing gift for you and you had no idea. Then you find out at the end of your life, like, wow, Pastor Drew had a house for me, a car for me, all these things for me. Anyway, the Lord is good. Our Bible reading plan, we're in X, um, Ezekiel chapter 40 up until Amos 5 this week. Um, next week, our service will also be in this room. Um, and Leadership Academies after the service, 2 to 3. We'll also have our Wembley Lighthouse meeting on the 24th of June in Wembley. So for more information, please speak to Zenaid. And guys, we've just got a few more weeks now until the Word of Life Ministers Conference. Hallelujah. So guys, whether you're going to be there or not, let's be praying for this. Amen. What happens there impacts our church and impacts us and impacts the work across Europe. Amen. So let's be prayerful about that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, guys, if you could rise to your wonderful feet. We have Brother Marcel here with us today. Amen. Um, I'm sure he'll share some things uh, later on. Amen. But him and his wife and his family were here right in the beginning for a month, right? Three months. Three months. So before my time here. And uh, he is a, a blessing, a great friend, and an anointed, gifted minister of the word. And with the keyboard. Amen. So open your hearts, guys, in Jesus' name to receive from the Lord this morning. Amen. Father, we thank you. We already prayed this morning, Lord, but we just open our heart out again afresh, Lord, in Jesus' name. In fact, uh, Marcel, why don't you share that word that you had while we was um, praying during the prayer time? And then you flow, sir. <laughs> Be free. Just came really strong in my heart uh, while Pastor Jorge was praying about something new about this church. After before he started praying, it just came in my heart really strong that uh, there is a new season coming. A new season is coming. A, f a, a fresh wind.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you for moving in this place. Thank you, Lord, for moving in our hearts. A new season, a new time, a fresh and a new blow of the Spirit for this church, for the families, for your marriage, for your children, for your calling, your ministry, your purpose. A fresh, a fresh and a new blow of the Spirit. Open your hearts this morning. Open your hearts and glide with the Spirit. Glide with the Spirit. Glide with the Spirit. Glide with the Spirit. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You shall renew your strength. Your marriage shall be renewed. Your family shall be renewed. Your ministry shall be renewed. God has called you to prosper and to be a blessing. You're called to be fruitful, to increase and to make impact in all areas of your life. But it's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by my spirit, says the Lord. This is not just for ministry only but for your family, for your marriage, a fresh and a new blow of the Spirit. You glide in with the Holy Spirit. You glide in, you glide in. And there being that ease. There's an ease. Is there work? Yes, but it's the Spirit that does the work. Father, thank you for this new flow this morning. New flow, taking us to realms where it's easy, easy because we're leaning on the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Marcel, if you could just flow for a moment. You know, guys, when you have a worship guest come in, it's good to worship, amen. Guys, you know, this month is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we have to get used to flowing with the Holy Spirit. Isn't that right, Brother Hui? Amen. And some things you learn. That's why we encourage you to go Bible school, because you learn things, you catch things. And some things you learn by demonstration. We want to create that atmosphere, that room of hearts, where the Spirit can move freely. He can move freely. So, Lord, here we are this morning. Guys, let the Father hear your cry. Let the Father hear what you have to say. Have you come here already full or have you come here hungry? Amen. Let the Father hear your cry. Don't worry about your neighbor. Don't worry who's next to you. Close your eyes if that will help. Stand if that help. Get down on the floor if that will help. Father, we commit this service to you, Lord. We're not going through the motions. We believe, Lord, that we're in a new season, Lord. And we want to catch the wind of the Spirit. We want to catch the wave of the Spirit. Maybe we've been streaming down this way, but Lord, we're here to catch the stream, the very stream, the very word you're saying in the hour. You're not only the God of the written word, but you're also the God that speaks by the Spirit. You give a word in season. I don't know what word you need to take you to the next season, but the Father is present to minister to you if your heart is open. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Begin praying, church. Begin praying. Don't come here to go in the motions. Blow myself away.
the Spirit. The utterance, the inspiration, it comes by the Spirit. Sounds, 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 sounds. You know, we're a church that believes in the power of our words, right? And when you begin to make sound onto the Lord, guys, I don't know what walls, what's hindering you, what's been hindering you, what's, what's been a hindrance. It's, it, it, there's a hindrance, there's a hindrance. Begin to sing. Begin to sing. Make a shout to the Lord. Make a sound. Make a sound. And just like in the old times, those walls will come down. Those walls will come down. Hindrance is not hindrance is not your portion. Hindrance is not your portion. Being stuck is not your portion. No, no, no. Let a sound arise from your heart. Let a sound, let a sound, let a, a song that comes by the Spirit. say in the Bible, our service has to be like this. You know, we have to have the worship time no longer than this. We have to have the word time no longer than this. Let the Lord minister to you. Let the Lord minister to you. Let the Lord minister to you. Let him minister. Let him minister. Let him minister to your hearts. He knows the desires in your hearts. He knows your purpose. He knows your dreams. He knows the things that excite you. He knows your hardships and your difficulties. He said he will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He is your way. He is your guide. Don't be deceived what the world says. Don't be deceived of that mindset that says this is your portion. You just deal with it. Just deal with it. This is your portion. No. No. My Lord paid such a high price. He 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 gave you your children. Why fret over your children? Why be fretful? 
Why fret? I gave them to you. Why fret? I gave them to you. Why fret? I gave them to you. They're in the palms of my hands. They're in the palms of my hands. Didn't I not call Israel my children? Have I not restored? Am I not, rest- am I not doing a new work in that nation? Those I've called, I will not forsake. I have not forgotten you. I have not forgotten you. Don't entertain that fool. I have not forgotten you. I have not forgotten you. I have not forgotten you. I am with you. I am with you. I am with you. I am with you. Hold my hand. Hold my hand. I am with you. Receive. Receive of my grace. I am with you. Receive of my grace. I am with you. I'll part the sea. I will teach you how to sleep in the storm when the boat is sinking. I will teach you how to sleep in the boat when the when in the storm when the boat is sinking. Hold my hand. I told you I'll never leave you or forsake you. My spirit is my gift to you. Learn to trust him. Learn to know his voice. He will guide you. He will show you. He will lead you on the path where the impossible is made possible. His grace is sufficient. It's sufficient for your marriage. It's sufficient to live a life of holiness. It's sufficient to turn around your business. It's sufficient for you and your ministry. My grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. Be deceived no longer. Do not believe the lies. This is not your portion. I have better. I have greater. I have more. 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 Don't be satisfied with the manna in the desert. There is a place that flows with milk and honey. There is your promised land. What I've spoken to you, it shall come to pass. It shall come. Angelica, it shall come. It shall come. What the Lord has told you, it shall come. It shall come. He's maturing you. He's growing you. He's shaking off the rough edges because he has a calling for you. And everything he has shown you before, it shall come to pass. You will see, you will be a sound, a sound of deliverance for people in bondage. A sound of deliverance. They will see you and they'll be attracted to the anointing upon your life. He is faithful. He is faithful. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's a purpose for every season. Lord, let the anointing increase in our life. Let it increase. Let it grow. Let it grow. Let every difficulty turn around now for testimony, for a testament. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. There's a fresh sound in your spirit. A fresh sound. Oh, Salala Marusa. Ella Maram Rusi Kalam Rosetalala. Come on, begin praying in the spirit. Hallelujah. teaching you I am teaching you how 
start to find strength in the time of need. When the circumstances are pressing, when the fiery darts of the enemy are bombarding your mind, the Lord is saying, I'm teaching you how to respond. My faithful servant David was in a tough situation that wasn't his fault, and his own people wanted to stone him. And the Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. Do you know how to encourage yourself in the Lord? Do you know how to stir yourself up in the spirit so new sounds can flow from your inner being? Do you know how to receive of the very rivers that come from your own mouth? It doesn't matter if you're young. It doesn't matter if you're a minister or not. The Lord Church is teaching us how how to be strengthened. The Bible says when you pray in tongues, you strengthen yourself, you edify yourself. You go from one level to another level. He is teaching us this morning. He is teaching us. He is teaching us. He is teaching us. Receive from him, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You can rejoice, amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. I'm so glad we, we don't belong to a religion. Amen. I'm so glad that our Lord is living and he's alive and the rivers flow. Amen. As I've extended my time here, I won't take long. Um, guys. You know, let me just read this scripture here quickly. In 3 John chapter 1, the Apostle John says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. You know, guys, it's God's will for us to prosper. Only two of the church members believe that. <laughs> but do you know what, guys? Prosperity without understanding, uh, always leads to fruitlessness. There's a story, there's a parable in, in the Gospels where this guy um, was blessed by God. You know, his harvest, his field produces great harvest. And he was like, wow, what am I going to do with all this harvest? I know, oh, knock down my house and I'll build a bigger house so I can store all this abundance. And he didn't realize that the increase in the abundance we have is for a purpose. It is to be a blessing. To see the work of God's kingdom expand and to live a life of generosity. Amen. That's why in 1 Timothy chapter 6, how many rich people do I have here? Amen. Amen. Well, look, here's a command for you rich people. Amen. <laughs> First Timothy I'm in one of those in brackets as well, amen. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. The Apostle Paul says to Timothy, command those who are rich. Where's all the rich people? Yeah, excellent. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us Richly, all things to enjoy. Amen. Let them do good that they may be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. We could spend quite a long time on that, but we don't have time to do that. But guys, here's an instruction to those that are rich. Amen. It is to have a heart that is ready to give, a heart that is willing to give. Amen. When you begin to understand that, you understand why the Lord has blessed you so much. Amen. Because you know you've got a calling and a ministry of being generous and to be a blessing. Amen. You know, guys, one way you can honor the Lord is with your tithes. And another way you can be generous is with your offerings. Amen.
And I say it many times, guys. What we do as a church, I hope it doesn't just stay here. Amen. I hope what we just have, what happened just now, I hope that overflows into your day-to-day lives. When we pray, I hope that overflows. Amen. When you give tithes and offerings, I hope this is not the only place and the only time that you give offerings. I hope that you're supporting other works and other missionaries and being prepared to be generous. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So if you want to give, you can give online. Um, The details to give will be there. Um, Or you can also give by cash. Um, The details on the envelope is only for those that um, are UK taxpayers. You can boost your giving by 25% because we're a registered charity. So you don't have to add your details there. If you need a pen or a paper, Sister Suze will hand that over to you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's pray. I know we're in the digital age now. Amen. Guys, when you do your online transfers, I know it's just a snap of a button. You can even have a a standing order. But pray over them, amen. Be thankful that you're in a position now to be generous and to be a blessing to others. My prayer, my first prayer is, Lord, I pray that this seed sown would multiply and increase in the work and the people's lives in Jesus' name. And then after, I thank you, Lord. And I believe I receive a mighty harvest that I can always be generous. So, Lord, I thank you, Father, for everyone this week, today, this morning, this month. Given cash, given online, Lord. First of all, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for blessing us. I thank you, Father, for giving us understanding, Lord. We believe we are rich and will become more and more and more. But with purpose and with understanding, Lord, that we live a generous life on this earth. We pray that what has been sown would multiply and impact lives across the nations, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that we are part of the kingdom of heaven. And our blessing and our increase and open doors comes by you, Lord. So as we've given, Lord, this week, this day, this month, we expect and we thank you in advance, Lord, for our harvest in Jesus' name. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you, Father, for open doors. Thank you for favor before men. Favor, favor, favor in Jesus' name. Lord, whatever has been hindering, we pray today it be opened in Jesus' name. We declare houses, cars, everything needed, Lord, for us to live our life in enjoyment and to fulfill the plans of God for our lives. We thank you for it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Angelica is going to share the word today. We're going to be blessed. I'm sure she will invite Bob and myself to come back in the hot seat. <laughs> but <laughs> Church, grace and peace, amen. So, as Pastor Jordan always does, I'd like to invite you to stand up and greet your neighbors. <laughs> yeah.
Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray. Father, thank you so much. We are so grateful, Father, for this opportunity to be here together as the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the salvation that you, you have conquered for us on the, on the cross. We don't take this lightly, Father. And I pray that we can never be distracted of what it really means for us, Father. Father, thank you for your Holy Spirit ministering to our hearts this morning. And that we may understand, Father, we may learn from you things, words of life that will transform, transform our, our lives, Father, as we practice it. In Jesus' name, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So, yes, I'd like us to start opening our Bibles in Luke chapter 10, starting from verse 38. And I was prayerful about today, and there are many verses in my heart, but I believe, yeah, for this is the month of the Holy Spirit, as Pastor Rodel was saying. Every month is the month of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But this month, specifically, we are learning about the Holy Spirit. And yes, I'm, I believe we'll learn more. And this is the, the story of two sisters, Martha and Mary. You probably have heard before, but let's read. It says, Now it happened, as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. <laughs> and I believe this is a season, seasoned word for, for us, specifically here in London. You know, each church, God has a specific word because there is like, um, yeah, different contexts, you know. And this, this city, I'm not from here as you may imagine. <laughs> but this city has impacted me as like everybody's always rushing. Even when you are on the, the escalator, you have to stay on the right. You can't stand on the left. People will be angry at you. I remember that and then I, was to, uh, I came the first time with my, my cousin and he said, you, you need to stay here. Like I was there in the escalator looking on the, the left, and he said, no, you need to move. And people running the, the escalator, and I was like, my goodness, they are not afraid of falling. I had, I had fallen in the escalator when I was a child, so I don't run in the escalators. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, wow, people are rushing all the time, even on the park. One time I was walking in the park that you can, you can walk, and then someone was, was walking and he said, move, and I was like, my goodness, like they, they, have, they have the right to be upset because there are rules, you know, for those who are ru rushing and those who are like slow. So <laughs> I, was, I was like, wow, everything here is so fast paced, isn't it? And everybody wants to be very productive in one hour. Let's do the most we can. I remember when I was starting working as cleaning. Uh, I was with some other people, and they would say, like, uh, we have one hour to finish this, and, like, everybody running. And, uh, and the other house was not as busy, but that one, was like, one hour, Angelica, you need to be quicker. I was like, oh, my goodness. And sometimes we can be distracted by the, the busyness, by the, you know, I have to finish on time, and this is all in your mind. 
And sometimes we come to church with the same mindset. Like, as if, have you heard of Charles Chaplin? Yeah? That he is in a, that um, place where he works. And then he does that so much that even when he's home, he's still doing it. So sometimes we don't uh, change our mind, our mindset. We, we continue in our home brushing and then in church brushing. And then like, oh, I came to service. Life has not started yet. And then finish. Bye. And then home. Rushing to get home. Why? I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. But like, I can rush if I'm late to work. But I'm not going to rush to get home. I'll go slowly because I, I have nothing to do there. But people rush to go home because they are used to it. This is their culture. Uh, maybe you guys who are from here, you don't notice that because... This has always been like this for you, but I'm from a slow-paced city. Everything is much slower, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's uh, João Pessoa in Brazil. It's by the sea. Everybody's relaxed. It's all the time the weather exactly like this, 27 degrees exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, yeah, we are very laid back, and you see people wearing bikinis all the time. Not just bikinis, like with something on top of it. Yeah, it's a relaxed, relaxed environment. But I'm not saying this is wrong. This is a big city, you know, and it's necessary. You need to adapt. You need to do it. But with the Lord, you don't need to rush. Amen. This is our time with God. This is our time with Him. Sometimes we are so used to be busy, we don't even know what to do when we are not busy. I remember when I was in ministerial school, there was a class about the family of the minister. And they, was, they were saying that the couples, they should take some time together ministers couples because sometimes they would be so used to do ministry together that they would forget to be a couple and then when they had like a long time they didn't have anything to talk about other than ministry so they would forget like what brought them together in the first place amen and it's the same with God sometimes we we may we say we are Christians. Yes, glory to God. We are Christians. But where is our relationship with God? When we are with him, do you know what to say? Like, Lord, do we know what to say when we are with him? Do we know do we know how to just enjoy his presence? Do we feel the need to be busy doing something? Sometimes we, we get busy because we are trying to run away from that empty, you know. I know that. Sometimes I do that as well. It's like a, it's, a, it's a way to escape. Oh, I'm going to pray now. No, but first let me fold my clothes because it's all a mess and I've been uh, like, I'll not concentrate with the clothes there. So I fold the clothes and then like, and then, oh, no, I need to wash the dishes. And then I go wash the dishes. No, I need to hover the room. And then I, I clean all the room, and then there is no more time to pray because I was, you know, getting distracted. And it's so good. It is so good to be with the Lord. But sometimes we forget. We forget this. And, and Jesus said there to Martha, in, in the verse I have, is New Living Translation, it says, My dear Martha, you are, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will, only be it will not be taken away from her. So, yes, this is what matters. This is what is the most important in our lives. This is the most important thing in your life, in my life. It's more important than your family, your relationship with God, 
come first. Comes first. God. God first. It's not serving. Serving is a blessing. Continue serving. But we shouldn't replace serving by our time with the Lord. Amen. So it's important now that Pastor Herdell and the leadership has this new direction to have prayer for us to finish all of the things we have to finish and be praying. Because what's the point of us doing all of this, being here together, if it's not to be a church together, to be the body of Christ together, and to receive this collective anointing together. So, yes, this is the most important thing, is our relationship with God through prayer and through the Word. You know, so many times the Word inspires us. I, w I was reading this this week about the people of Israel, and they were in the desert, on the desert, or in the desert? In, in the desert. And then um, they went to see the, the land, the promised land, the, the land that would have honey and milk, the land that they escaped Egypt from, the promise for Abraham, and they were like, they went to spy the city, the, the land, and 12 people went to, to spy, they brought like big food that people had to carry together. Like the, the land was really good. And two of them came with good report. That was Joshua and uh, Caleb. Yeah. And 10 of them said, no, we are like um, grasshoppers before them. They see us as, have they talked to them to say like, you are grasshoppers? They, they put that in their own minds, you know, like, I didn't even talk to Zenaidi, and I come to to sister, and I say, Zenaidi sees me as a grasshopper. Like, she never told me that, you know? This is all in your mind. And it was the same with the people of Israel. They, they were afraid. They had the mindset of slaves, and then they couldn't conquer the land. And uh, they were complaining, like, they were considering more the circumstances than they were considering the word of God. Because God said, that is your land. I promised, I, I am able to make this happen. And then they started putting the responsibility to themselves. No, we can't take this land. Of course you can't. It's with God. With God you can, but not without God. So sometimes we can be like this. We can we can miss the promise, and I forgot where where I was. <laughs> I was giving an example. Yes, yes. So the Old Testament, and then we see the people of Israel, because they didn't focus on God, they considered the circumstances more. They started complaining, and then they they started uh, losing focus of God, and then they they lost the the promise. That generation, anyway, they lost. They died in, in the desert. And the funny thing is that they had to conquer one land in the desert to stay there until they died. They could have done all that fight in the promised land. But no, they had some fight in the desert to stay there, you know. It was not the best of God for them. But, yes, they, they, com they complained and they missed what God, the best of God for them. So let's read what's in Acts chapter 17, verse 26. Oh, yeah, I remember what I was saying. Yes. <laughs> so, yes, through the word and through prayer, that's how we develop our relationship with God. And then I was reading this passage, and the Lord was ministering to me. You shouldn't complain. You shouldn't be upset of what you have because what you have, I gave to you. I gave to you. If you are complaining about or s your circumstances, you are complaining about me. I'm not God doesn't give diseases or anything, but sometimes we want something better and we focus so much. Oh, I want this. And, and then sometimes we use God to achieve what we want. But this is the other way around. We need to seek God and everything else he gives us. 
God needs to come first. God needs to come first. God needs to come first in our lives. He is our priority. Oh, Lord, you are our priority. You are the first one. Lord, forgive us if we have not given you the first place, but I want to give you the first place always, Father. Don't want to forget that. And it says here, Acts sev uh, chapter 17 says, And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed time and the boundaries of their dwelling. Next verse, please. So that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope. Oh, that's the word you're using, right, Pastor? Grope? No? Sorry. <laughs> For him and find him through, though he is not far from each one of us in the hope that they might grope for him and find him. Uh, though he is not far from each one of us. What does it mean? It says, the Lord is not far. He is near. He is near. But it takes action from us to seek him. To seek him with all of our hearts. It's not just, oh, Lord, yeah. Angelica is looking, and then after she looks, then, oh, Angelica is looking. No, guys, it's with your heart. It's with your heart. L the Lord sees everything. Even if I'm pretending to be seeking to someone to see, God sees your heart. So change your heart. If you are going to lift your hands, what's the point? Just do it with your heart. Amen. It's better. It mo it's more fruitful anyway. And... Yes, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Colossians. Yes? Is it there? Oh, yeah, thank you. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the high hand of God, I think we until verse 3, so let's go to 2. Set your mind on things above, not on things of on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. No longer I live, but Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. Christ in, all, in us is the hope of the glory. It is not us. It is the, the manifestation of Christ in our lives that will manifest God to people. You know, we are, like Zenaide was saying earlier, we are little Christ. He died, and then he was risen so that he could multiply. And But it is through this relationship with God, this relationship with the Word. We need to be hungry of God and of the Word. So that we can manifest Christ in our lives. And it's the purpose. The purpose is to promote God's kingdom. The purpose are the things from high above. The purpose is not myself. You know, praise God, we, we receive Jesus because we, we want to be saved. But there is a purpose. There is a purpose for your prosperity. There is a purpose for your family to, to grow. If we are too focused on ourselves, oh, Lord, please bless me, bless me, bless me. Why? The purpose. The purpose. If you, if you correct your heart, it's nothing wrong to have good things, to have a good family, to believe in God's promises. That's, that's what we believe. Praise God. And I'm glad for that. Amen. But I was reading that book of Brother Hagen. I don't know if it's the son or the father, but it's the Midas Touch. Have you heard of it? That's a good book. Midas Touch, yeah, thank you. And then he he shares in the beginning, I, I did not finish yet. It he shares that it is the purpose. And then he tells the story of Midas that he he wanted to have the power of touching anything and become gold. And then he touched an apple, and then he touched like a, 
anything, like his blankets, everything, a cup. And we're like, oh, it's gold. He was happy. He had gold, like he was very rich. He wanted more, more money, you know. And then when he realized that every food he touched was becoming gold, he was like, what am I going to eat? Ooh. And then a, an accident happened. Um, he was coming, and his daughter came running, as she would always do, and hugged him. And what happened is that she became gold as well. And then he was like, oh. And then he was so sad because he loved his daughter. So he talked to whoever gave the power of gold, turning things to gold. And then that person said, he said, no, this doesn't matter. The gold doesn't matter. What really matters is that I can eat and the people around me. So that person helped him and ch uh, turned again everything that became gold into normal things, including, including his daughter. And then he learned a lesson. And uh, Brother Hagen, father or son, I don't remember, uh, shared this in the book. It's good. We he preached prosperity. But there is a purpose. There is a purpose. There is a purpose for us to be blessed. There is a purpose. It's the same. We are believing for the growth of this church. Amen. But there is a purpose. There is a purpose. Oh, we want a new building. Why? Why? You know, to bless more people. Amen. It's not like, oh, we shouldn't desire a new building more anymore. No, yes, you should. Correct your motives. If your motive is wrong, just correct it. Correct for the right purpose. I learned that from Pastor Perillo. He was saying this. Um, I, I never liked doing videos and stuff. And then as a missionary, sometimes you have to because uh, to share the, the mission and to have partners and people to come with you. Uh, they don't come like physically, but they support. And I didn't like it. And I said, oh, I don't like to, to be there in front of people. I don't like to appear. And then, like, I think sometimes I was being judgmental about these people. and say, like, oh, I don't want to be, like, uh, trying to show off, trying to be better than others in appearing. And he said, no, you you can do the same thing, but with the right purpose, with the right motive in your heart. So you don't have to not do it. No, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to have the bad motive. So no, I don't want to have money because then I will care about money only. No, you can have money, but change your heart. Be watchful of your heart. What's my purpose? Sometimes even like we have the blessing and we have the right motives and sometimes it changes. That's why we need to be always watchful of our hearts. It's, this is a uh, spiritual maturity that nobody has to come to you and say, you are doing it wrong. You are doing it wrong. No, the Holy Spirit speaks to you and I say, oh yeah, Lord, my motivation was wrong. It changed. Forgive me. It's nothing wrong to ask forgiveness. And he forgives. He's not holding grudges like, oh, but you did this. No, it's just so simple. He forgives and he forgets. That's it. Let's move on. Because all God wants is to see us prospering. All God wants is to see us growing. But if we do it with the wrong motivation, he knows it will be bad for us. So he wants us to get the things correct and proper so that we can move forward to the purpose. That's all. God is good. God is good. He doesn't want anything bad for us. Sometimes we, we see God as bad, you know, like mean. Sometimes we do. I, I, I'm not sure. Okay, I'll talk about myself. Like, oh, no, God will punish me. God will be angry. No. Even when God corrects us, he wants the good. He corrects because he wants us to do things right. And he doesn't do it out of anger. He does it out of love. Amen. So, yes. I'm sorry, guys. This was not planned. <laughs> so, yes, I, I was reading this book, Until Nothing Else, else Matters, from um, Luciano Subira. 
and he's talking about this, like how we should seek God. And he shares something that William Inge shared, something very interesting. He said, if we spend 16 hours per day in contact with things of this earth and only five minutes, five minutes a day in contact with God, uh, we should be like admired that the things of this earth uh, are for us 200 times more real than God. Yeah, that's true. We spend the whole day working. And sometimes, how long do you spend praying a day? And what becomes more real? I remember, I think it's Maneco who always says that, or it's Brother Hagen, I don't remember, who says, God wants us to be more aware, it's Brother Hagen, of his presence than of the clothes that we are wearing. Guys, the clothes, I'm very aware of these clothes, especially now with the heat. I'm very much aware. But God wants us to be more aware of his presence. You know what is being aware? It's like, yeah, this is here. I know. This is here. I can feel it. I can feel my clothes. Can you feel your clothes? Can you touch it? Is it there? It's there, isn't it? Yeah? But God wants us to be more aware of him. That we know he is here. More than I know these clothes are here. I have no doubt. I have no doubt these clothes are here. Do you have any doubt? God wants us to be more aware that he is within us. And how do we do it? By being in his presence. Amen. We were created to seek God. And how should we seek God? In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, it says, Jeremiah chapter 29, sorry, <laughs> verse 13 says, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Yes, and God, God cares about our motivation. Mark chapter 12, verse 30. Mark 12, 30. Do you zero? Amen. Mark. Yeah, thank you. And you shall love the Lord your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment of our new covenant. We are in a new covenant. We don't, we don't follow the Ten Commandments anymore. We have two new ones from Jesus. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all all your strength, with everything you have, with all your breath, with everything. Give yourself completely. I'm yours, Lord. And the second is love your neighbor like yourself, as you love yourself. So, yes. And Luke chapter 14, verse 16. Luke chapter 14, verse 16. Thank you. Then he said to him, a certain, a certain man gave a great supper and invited many. We will read until the 24. And sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servants, Go out quickly into the street 
and lanes of the city, and bringing here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is, uh, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Yes, so this is, this is it. Sometimes those were servants. The, the Lord invited them, invited them to sit at the table with him and enjoy his presence. But sometimes they were, they were servants, so it means everything they had was because that Lord blessed him. And sometimes we are so focused on enjoying the blessing that we forget the presence. And this is, this is very sad, guys. We, we need to seek God first, as I've been seeing, saying. Yeah, 10 minutes. Thank you. And yes, I'm not going to read there. Um, but in Exodus, you see that um, sometimes we, we have good intention. Oh, Angelica, no, no, I'm not sinning. I'm not doing anything wrong. You don't need to worry about that. And, and this book I was reading, I don't remember which one. Yeah. Anyway, this author said that, you know, the devil tries to distract us in different ways, not with sin, but sometimes watching too much TV, sometimes just doing things that are not wrong, like cleaning my room. But if it's distracting me from God, what's my priority? Should be God. I'm, I'm wrong to do tidy my room. If I only have time to do one thing, I should go pray. Otherwise, I'm being just like, like Martha. <laughs> Amen. So, yes, we need to seek God first. Let's read what is yeah, John chapter 14, verse 15. John chapter 14, verse 15 said, Thanks. If you love me, keep my commandments. 16, please. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. 17, please. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit is our helper. He's the same as God. He's the same as God, the same as Jesus. I'd like to invite you guys to stand up. Sometimes we come and we expect something of the person that is before us. And sometimes it's like, oh, I don't like that person. Honor the anointing because it's the Holy Spirit ministering to you. It's not me, it's not Marcel, it's not Pastor Jordel. It is the Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit. Oh, we love you, Father. I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy
just want you nothing else nothing else nothing else will do I just want you nothing else nothing else nothing else will do I just
breaks every oath. Your power, Lord. Oh, the gospel we preach. <laughs> it's not full of knowledge, but it is carried with the power, the power of God. Then it presença Deus Your presence, Lord. ela é poderosa It is powerful. mas eu sinto aqui agora But I feel here now. uma resistência em a, alguns corações a resistance in some hearts. se você agora está em resistência If you are now resisting, de desfrutar da presença do Senhor enjoy the Lord's presence. não perca mais tempo Don't miss out. Se você de repente não sabe como fazer isso, If you don't know how to do it, apenas feche os seus olhos just close your eyes e desfrute. And enjoy. Deus tem muitas coisas para nós. God has many things for us. E essa unção, and this anointing, ela despedaça jugo. It breaks every yoke. Ela fortalece. It strengthens us. Ela cura. It heals. Você não pode perder isso. You cannot miss out. Desfrute. Just enjoy. Desfrute. Just receive. É a unção. It is the anointing. Ele é Deus. It is God. Você não precisa entender. You don't need to understand. Apenas desfrute. Just enjoy. Ele tem para você. What he has for you. Ele tem para você. Abra o seu coração. Erga as suas mãos. Lift up your hands. E se entregue. And surrender. E o resto And ele fará. Aleluia. Aleluia. Ora bra mama sheira, bra mama mama sheira, bra mama mama so. Let's start 
praying in tongues, church. Anyone here has never been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Oh, and would you like to? Break our walls down. Spirit, break out. <laughs> Heaven comes down. In our hearts today, Lord. Yes, yes. Heaven was down. Spirit break out. Yes, break out, break out, break out in the hearts. Yes. Heaven come down. Oh, salamu, silando, levando. Spirit break out. Guys, be free, amen. But if you want to come up and just quickly, we don't make a big deal, just quickly you can come up if you want. We'll lay hands on you and declare a new anointing. You know, guys, there's a reason why the Bible says the laying on of hands is a foundational teaching in the Christian faith. A foundational teaching in the Christian faith. Because there's impartations. 
There is new levels you go to through the laying on of hands. By faith, new graces. The sound this morning has been a new season, a change. And an act of faith, we will lay hands on you. Yes. And declare the grace for new levels. I can testify, guys. I can look back at moments, whether I was called out in a service or just came out. I've went to, I've traveled far places because there's graces, there's moments, there's graces, there's anointings that take us to new levels. It is not by might, it is not by power, it is by the Spirit. Zantu, Lepranta Kasuria. Ela mumbra panayana tonentala baraka sutele la 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 morota manduse maya bambrofika bela kusuda lambra tinana mambrofia membro sia le kian shanan tolopra papaya la manda maranda a new anointing a new grace a new grace a new grace a new anointings receive it in Jesus name a new grace a new anointing a new grace, a new anointing. Hey, hey, a new peace, a new peace, a new peace, a new peace, a new peace in Jesus' name. Zambro Sikatayala Marando, a new grace, a new anointing, a new grace to break down old walls, walls, walls in the spirit realm that have been there for decades, even centuries. I declare in the name of Jesus, the grace that knocked down those walls. People will say it's been like that too long. It's been like that too long. But a new boldness, the line of Jesus in you, a grace that knocks down, 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 that knocks down. down. Receive it in Jesus' name. Zaftoria, Branta Kasutala, Ambrosekatia, Ha ha ha, Ha ha ha, Ha ha ha, Ha ha ha. The enemy thought he had you in a snare and in a trap. Ha ha ha, Zopratana Makanta. Oh Father, we've seen, uh, we've seen elements of this boldness. And I declare, Lord, this boldness arising, 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 arising. Where's Angelica? Put your hands on her stomach. On her stomach? arising in Jesus name not from here not just psyching yourself up a boldness that comes from the rivers receive it in the name of Jesus receive it and don't look back don't look back don't look back run 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 in Jesus name oh 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 rabo zembra piriata pirianta antulenta impra casala zezezea oh salamando pirideando pirideando Oh, salam, rakishena manasuta, elamananda. Oh, Father, a new grace, a grace that is like an arrow, an arrow, an arrow that is fast and, and, and precise. I thank you, Lord, for a grace, a grace that is fast as an arrow and precise, Lord. I declare new wisdom, sharpness in the spirit, perceiving things by the spirit in Jesus' name. The grace that that perceives, that sees, that sees, that sees and knows that oh selambra katalura mena supra kanana mananda and Lord a new strength, 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 a new strength. Mambrosa kalama oh shelele shelele lelele brosi kalala lala zazazaya. Zazazaya, Ambro favor, Lord, favor, 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 favor. You're called to be a blessing in this nation. The people in this nation want what you carry. Asarada, Zimbra Katalada, in Jesus' name. Oh, Salam, oh, Ramanta, Bere Borosa. Mamba bara etalala o salala membra pamana mambro kiala la mono se kena na haya ha ha stay hungry stay hungry there's more there's more there's more there's more there's more lord thank you for the gifts the gifts in manifestation in his life in jesus name the utterance gifts the utterance gifts the utterance gifts the utterance gifts in jesus name thank you lord Mambro sida, mambro sida, imprakata, basuru prapakata. Hey, the gift of prophecy in Jesus' name. Asalamana, mambro siala, sikala mumbra, vatea, 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 zaprokutala. New grace, 
new grace. Hallelujah. Asa la landa. Mamro sede de asa. Oh, thank you, Lord. Manona ma cancile marando brosita ma bombra pabosha cancida. Hey, 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 hey. Selela le de yata. Oh, sananto le manta. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are not stuck. You are not stuck. For those with the Lord cannot be stuck. Clergy, you are not stuck. Every hindrance right now be removed by the grace of the Lord in Jesus' name. Every hindrance in this mind, every lie be exposed and be cast away right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the grace that transitions, the grace that implements, the grace that moves forward in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your hand upon her, moving her to places that was impossible yesterday. In the name of Jesus, Ambrapala, O Sepependa di Bosumbra Papala Maranda, your latter days are always better than the former days. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Ears open in the secret place. Lord, a grace for the secret place. Extended time in the secret place. And suti alembra satia le maranda parasuya, parasuya, parasura, parasura. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew, they shall renew their strength. Renew your strength. Your strength is renewed. Your strength is renewed. Your strength is renewed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Is anybody sick here or struggling in their body with pain? Amen. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by the Spirit. It's not even how clever we say the words, because sometimes we know how to say the right things, but it must be of the Spirit. Yolanda, thank you, Jesus, the healer. Jesus, the healer. Jesus, the healer. Jesus, the healer. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we command everything missing or deteriorating be reformed in the authority and in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, let every bone be restored in the authority of Christ right now in Jesus' name. And we command.
headaches to never return in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the revelation of faith strengthening Brother Doug in Jesus' name. He is healed. He is healed. He is healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You know, Doug, I know you lead people to the Lord. And I know that if you led someone to the Lord and they got saved and they came to you in discipleship the next week and they would say, oh, Doug, but I've done this, I've done this. I know you'd be quick to tell them that Jesus forgave them. You would be quick to tell them. And in the same way, you are healed. You are healed. Enemy come, you are healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just to finish, just a couple of verses the Lord gave me while we were praying. Um, Psalms 37, 4. It says, delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of, the, of your heart. You know, the word delight, we use it very often in our daily, you know, when we delight in a, in a meal, we say, oh, what a delightful meal we had. So that word means, delight in the Lord, means stay in the presence of the Lord. Rejoice in the presence of the Lord. Enjoy the presence of the Lord. No, I know not, not always it's easy to, to be in that environment, enjoying the presence of the Lord, because sometimes the Lord looks far but as our sister prayed he's not far he's near you know it's in our hearts and the other verse the lord gave me is joshua 21 45 joshua was about you know to depart from this world and he said to the people none of the promises of the lord failed none of them they all came to pass if in the old testament under an old covenant a weaker covenant than our one with superior you know, promises that we have according to Hebrews 7 and Hebrews 8. We have a better covenant with a better mediator, with better promises, superior promises. They will come to pass in our lives. Amen. Amen. Keep that word in your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Let's pray for Brother Marcel. Hallelujah. Sula nana. Silenena. Silenena. The missionary guys, his wife and his children are not here today, but they came to Europe as missionaries, I believe came here first in the UK, and have been serving faithfully in Germany. And soon they will go back to Brazil. Let's take a moment to cover them in prayers, amen? Uf, shilando, alamana, chelalenda, kidura, salana, marando. Oh, you are loved, brother. You are loved by the Father. You are loved. You are loved. You've been faithful. You've been faithful. You've been faithful. You've been faithful. And He will increase you. He shall increase you. He shall increase you with His presence, with His grace, with His anointing to destroy and to break yokes. You've been faithful, brother. Zalando, Drakiana, Nasuto. We bless him, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the seeds that have been sown in Europe. And we expect a mighty harvest in this land. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for this new season. Going back to Brazil is not going backwards, Lord. There's a season and a time for each thing, and we thank you, Lord, for this new season. This same wind, Lord, blowing them into that place, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your favor and your grace, opening doors, Lord, enabling them and strengthening them in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, thank you. Well, thank you, Lord, for, for worship teams opening their hearts to receive of this grace. 
to receive of this anointing in the name of Jesus. Lord, a servant, a faithful servant, we bless him, his wife, his children, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, guys, never want to take this, you know, just assume. But if anybody is here and you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you know, this is the opportunity to do it. Amen. Imagine spending your whole life going to church and not really being saved, knowing what to say, knowing the routine of Christianity, but not actually encountering the Lord. Amen. Close your eyes, everyone, for a moment. The Bible says that we have the inward witness in our hearts. The inward witness that says you are a child of God. You've come from darkness into light. And if you don't have that witness in your heart right now, don't be ashamed. It would be worse to go to a Christless eternity. Don't be ashamed. If you're here and you want to be sure of your salvation, you want to be sure that your sins have been forgiven and that you are now righteous in Christ, you can lift your hands up. Lifting your hands does not save you. But it's a way for you to publicly say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Take me as I am. Hallelujah. 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 You can pray this prayer. Father God, I believe in you. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I believe he came to this earth in the flesh. I believe he died for my sins. I believe he was buried. And I believe he rose from the grave. Lord Jesus, I confess you as my Lord. I repent of a selfish life, a sinful life. And now I choose to follow you. Fill me and baptize me with your spirit and power in Jesus' name. And for the rest of us, Lord, we thank you for today's service, for the word. I believe it's a call for more intimacy. It's a call to seek the Lord more faithfully with all of our hearts, with all of our strength, with all of our soul. And Lord, we recommit our lives to you. We co consecrate our lives to you. Everything that we have, our marriage, our kids, our family, our ministry, our finances, our responsibilities, our life, our time, Lord. We, we lay it before you and say, Lord, do what only you can do. Here I am. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, Brother Marcel, we just want to give you this. Oh, Angelica. I think, it, I think now I can. Be <laughs> 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 in the presence of the Lord. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing, Lester? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You can hear his drummer. Maybe they, they will not hear him. My son is in it. Primeiro de tudo, eu quero. Eu sou muito grato. Eu já falei isso ontem para a Roberta, a Angélica. First of all, I'm very grateful. Uh, I shared this yesterday with Roberto, Angelica, and Ariane. Uh, 
agradecer da minha gratidão ao Senhor, primeiramente. My gratitude to the Lord, first of all. Mas eu não poderia deixar de expressar a minha gratidão ao Pastor Jardel, a você, a toda a igreja. But I couldn't go without expressing my gratitude to Pastor Jardel and to you all. Eu realmente não tenho palavras para expressar, expressar essa gratidão. I really have no words to express this gratitude. Quando a Angélica falou comigo, né, da, da, da possibilidade de vir para cá. Quando a Angélica spoke to me about the possibility of coming here. E que eu conversei com minha esposa, amor, dá certo, vamos ver a data. And I spoke to my wife, honey, it works out. Uh, I, we spoke about the date. E que eu vi que dava certo de vir. And I saw, yeah, I can go. E eu imediatamente eu disse, Angélica, muito obrigado. And soon I said, Angélica, thank you very eu much. Eu me sinto muito honrado. I feel convite. very honored. Quero agradecer de coração ao Pastor Jardel. I want to thank you with all my heart, Pastor Jardel. Por ter me convidado para vir para cá. For inviting me to come e here. Aberto esse caminho para eu chegar aqui. Opening this way for me eu to come here. Eu me sinto muito honrado. Muito I feel coração. very honored. Muito with grato a Deus. My heart. Vocês, muito grato à igreja que me thank recebeu. Thank you, Lord. Carinho. Thank you, Church, for welcoming me with so Amém. much love. Deus é muito bom. God is very good. E eu quero só reforçar o que já foi dito várias vezes aqui hoje. And I just want to reinforce what has been said here many times today. Porque foi algo que o Senhor trouxe ao nosso coração enquanto estávamos orando ontem na casa do Roberto e Ariane. Because it was something that the Lord brought to our hearts when we were praying yesterday at Roberto and Ariane's house. Certamente existe uma nova estação para você e para Certainly igreja. there is a new season for you and for this church. There is a new season for you. There is a new season. There is a new time as a church, as an individual, como igreja, como indivíduo, also as a family, também como family. uma família. Just enjoy this what God has for you. Apenas receba o que Deus tem para você essa igreja. Enjoy it and receba. be part of it. Seja parte disso. Amen. Amém. There is a new season. É uma nova estação. Amen. Amen. And a new sound as a pastor. E um novo said. som, como o pastor estava dizendo. Amen. Amém. There is more. Existe mais. There is more. Existe mais. There is more. Existe mais. Você <laughs> já recebeu muito hoje, né? You've received a lot, right, today? But there is still there is more. But there is more. Existe mais. Existe muito mais. There is much more. É uma fonte que nunca se acaba. It's a source that never ends. Esses rios nunca se acabam. These rivers, they never end. Essas fontes nunca cessam. It never stops flowing. Existe mais para você. There is much more for you. Existe mais para você. There is much more for you, Yara. Para você, para sua família. For you and for your Existe family. Existe mais para você. There is more for you. Amém. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> não vou pregar, não vou pregar de novo, não. I'm not going to preach again. <laughs> Amen. Eu acho que eu já falei demais. I, I think I've spoken too much. Mas eu não queria deixar de compartilhar But com I didn't, I couldn't go without sharing this with já you. Já foi dito várias vezes hoje. It has been said many times today. Eu queria só testificar today. isso. I just wanted to share, to reinforce. Porque desde, desde quando eu cheguei aqui, ever desde since o, I o came here, oração, ever, ever since the prayer isso time, esteve no meu coração. this was in my heart. Uma nova estação. A new season. Uma, um novo sol. A new sound. Amém. Amen. Um vento fresco, a fresh. A fresh, yeah, no Amém. <laughs> Creio nisso. Believe in this. E honre a vida do seu pastor. And honor your pastor's life. Ele não me pediu para dizer isso, viu? He did not ask to say that. Mas eu preciso dizer isso. But I need to say e eu não digo isso só porque ele me convidou para vir para cá. And I'm not saying this just because he invited me to Mas come é here. Mas eu sempre gosto de reforçar para a igreja, para onde, onde eu vou e I always like to reinforce in the church where I go. Peguem junto com o seu pastor. Uh, help your pastor. Amém, você vai receber de Deus na sua casa. You receive from God, you and your house. Mas você vai ser muito abençoado, honrando a vida do seu pastor. But you'll be very blessed, honoring your pastor's honrando life. Honrando o sim que ele deu para o Senhor. Honoring the yes he gave to the Lord. Suportando ele. Supporting him. Honrando a unção que Deus colocou sobre ele. Honoring the anointing that is upon his life. Vocês vão comer tremendamente na vida do seu You shall reap greatly. À medida que vocês fazem, que vocês fazem. As you do it. Amém. Amen. Honre a vida dele. Honor his life. Cuidem dele com carinho, igreja, Take por favor. Take care of him with love, church, Amém. please. Em nome de Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amém. 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 Tempo já. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, guys, thank you so much for being here. Amen. Also, thank you, Pastor, as well, for being here with your family. It's always a joy to have you with us. Amen. In Jesus' name. And um, I think that's it. God is good. Those online, thank you. 
Oh, yeah. There is more for you too. Yes. Amen. There is more for you. Teas and coffees at the back there, guys. We'll be here again next week. And um, have a blessed time. Amen. Praise God. Oh, sorry. Yeah, pick up your wonderful kids. Always forget that one. <laughs> Leadership Academy as well, guys. Let's tear down and... The quicker we tear down, quicker we start Leadership Academy. Bye.